But how did they do it? I'm about to take the first steps in my investigation. Aerospace engineer Dr. Peter Barrington thinks I should get a feel for how a conventional wing creates lift. And the best place to do that is in his wind tunnel at the University of Kingston in London. Peter's given me a handheld smoke generator so I can make the airflow visible. So, Peter, how does it work and how can this help explain it? Okay, well, basically the key thing to, to a wing is the cross-sectional shape. And that bends the air around the wing. The wing is able to make the flow go a lot faster on the top than it goes on the bottom. The shape of the wing is designed so that air moves faster above than below. As a result, the air above the wing is at lower pressure than normal. So the higher pressure underneath the wing pushes upwards, creating lift for the whole aircraft. You do get the sense that lift, flight, is just a function of that shape of the wing. That's all it can do. The same smooth flow of air creates lift all the way along the wing. Or almost all the way. Peter's about to show me that conventional wings have a serious downside. If you move, move a bit this way, see what happens as you come a bit closer to the end. A bit closer. And to the tip of the wing. Exactly, yeah. There it goes. The airflow at the wing tip looks completely different. Instead of a clean, steady flow, there's a spiraling whirlpool of air. It's called a wingtip vortex. High pressure air from underneath the wing is leaking around the wingtip and pushing down on the top surface. That last 5% of the wing isn't really doing anything for you. It's not generating much lift. The vortex means the wingtip doesn't provide any lift. So the wing is longer than is really necessary. And for the super jumbo jet, that's a supersized problem. This A380 prototype was launched through a curtain of illuminated smoke. The test showed that the world's biggest wings would suffer from huge vortices at the wingtips. To compensate for the loss of lift, the A380's wings would have to be made even longer. Too long to fit in with airport size regulations. In wind tunnel tests, engineer Peter Barrington showed me how airliner wings suffer from spiraling vortices at the wingtips. Now we plan to solve the problem. This modification, inspired by an eagle's wingtip feathers, is called a winglet. Okay, have a look at the airflow now. As expected, the main body of the wing has a smooth airflow. But here, at the wingtip, there used to be a spiralling vortex. What do you see? No vortex. Now it's smooth. The vortex trying to curl around the wingtip finds its path blocked by the winglet. So it's as simple as that. Basically, it's a barrier that stops the air getting red. Exactly. And as a exactly. result of that, we win back this stretch of wind. Indeed. The vortex has been forced away from the wingtip and up to the top of the winglet. So the entire surface of the original wing is now creating lift, effectively doing the same job as a longer wing. That's what the eagle was doing. Indeed, I mean, I think if we had as long as the eagle did to evolve, we could probably get this a little bit smaller. Winglets can be made almost vertical to keep the total wingspan to an absolute minimum, just like an eagle's wings. So it turns out eagles are really good at flying. They are, yeah. extremely good. 